Okay, so I have to admit to one of our friends, I've been ragging on him for like a year now, but I had a bleach shower a be- the other day. Or actually, what? I've had two. A bleach shower? A bleach shower is what I'm calling it. Oh my gosh. I know. I have nothing to say to you about that. Okay, I've started. Why? Because I keep getting all these random boils and I'm desperate enough that I'm like, you know what? Screw it. So I'm, explain to everybody what you're talking about. I'm then. jumping on board with this. Um, so we have a friend that moved from America to Fiji. He decided that he stunk so bad in Fiji because in Canada and the States, they put chlorine in the water. And yeah, so a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. But you sometimes when you drink the water, you can taste it. Yeah. Yeah. So he decided that he stunk so badly because there is no chlorine or you know something like a major bacteria killer in his shower so when he showers he he puts a little bit of bleach in the water i think, I think it's like, like a big spray bottle with like a teaspoon of bleach yeah but like, like once, very little bit but like once a week i think that's what you told me mm-hmm. what i think it's more often than once a week it might have been more like often and i kept telling him and i may still go back to telling him don't do that <laughs> it's not good for you um but i've been keep getting these random boils and i can't get them to go away it is painful enough that I'm at the point of willing to try anything. And I was like, you know what? I've been mocking him or telling him he's bad like for his skin. He shouldn't be doing this. But it feels good. But now I'm like, you know what? And so I used it the other. I started. The reason is I started getting another boil right on my hip this week. And I did two bleach showers. Okay. And it's going away. It hasn't. Huh become something and so now i'm like a mild believer in this mm. yeah mm. you know what when pain is too much it makes you change i thought about bleaching my hips before too <laughs> yeah well do you know what your butt is pretty white so. it's true it's true <laughs> it's true so no need who knows maybe no need <laughs> maybe no need <laughs> So, today's been a... Okay, you know what? Today's been a day. It's actually been an exciting day. Like, we've had some awesome yeah. stuff happen today. So, we had... we had, Okay, exciting for us. Like, maybe small milestones, but we try to celebrate as much as we can because mm-hmm. life can be pretty down here sometimes, believe it or not. Not here. Just life in general. So, we try to, like, celebrate the small wins. So, we hit 190,000 on Facebook today. Yes. So that was exciting. Very, very exciting. It'll be so much more excited when we hit 200,000 because I've been waiting for that. Yeah. Day. Like, I'm like, come on. The problem with 200,000. Yeah, the problem with 200,000, you're like, okay, well, then the next thing is 300. Like, now we go on 100,000 <laughs> 100, increments, you know? I know. It's um, great. I love it. And so. It's not a problem. Yeah, I guess it's, it's fine. I'm just like, I'm nervous to hit 200,000 and then be like, Okay, yay. Uh. Don't mind John today. He's a bit of a negative Nancy. All right. He's looking then at we the signed glass our, half we signed, full. So as some of you know, we have uh, registered and and uh, we had done all the paperwork for our new company, Waka Media. And so we just signed our first contract with, or we just, somebody just accepted the first like commercial contract for Waka Media. So that Without was exciting. Without launching, we haven't actually launched the business yeah, yet. We've yeah. registered it. We've done a lot of background stuff. We're working on um, kind of the different proposals that we'll put out for you guys, the different yeah. offers that we'll have, different packages. Um, we're not finished with that yet. We're not ready to launch, but we already have our first contract, mm. which is the best start ever because um, before you launch and you already have signed contracts, how can we complain? Yeah, definitely. So, Definitely. We're stoked. And that came through Tui. Yeah. That contact. And so that's exciting. It's exciting to be able to do something together with him and yeah. to be like a part of, like for him, for us to be all, both a part of the business together. That's exciting. And to each of us all bring something different to the table. So like me and you have always, you know, worked well hand in hand. Yeah. And so... But obviously, we don't have the skills that he has, or like necessarily like the local contacts, because he used to have his own photography business and everything like that. So yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, and I can't wait to ramp it up and actually mm-hmm. 
I'm excited for the day where we have so much work that Tui can't be doing the work. He has to manage the work. Yeah. I think like... Well, that's the goal. That's always the goal. And I, I was also just saying to John today, like, you know, the next step for us is no longer being involved in the businesses that we're doing and like hands on. We need to start being more of the people that assign tasks and yeah. assign projects and assign things to people because somebody has to project manage everybody. Um, and if, if nobody's in charge of like the overall arcing businesses and like assigning and pushing and like trying to inspire and envision bigger and better and push for bigger and better, then people will only ever do the bare minimum. Mm. And it's not their fault. It's that like our vision is lacking. Our incentive for them is lacking. Our direction yep. is lacking. And so like to be a CEO of a company is not to be fully involved and like not be so egotistical that you have to do. It's actually that you have to step back and go, okay, now I have to direct and obviously, like, John and I will always do... What's so going on there? What? You hear that? Like, banging on around the side? Yeah. It's probably the ginormous rat that's in our house. We do have a ginormous rat in this house. The so, big, you guys, you guys the see our sick... biggest rat. I'm not even kidding. It's, like, the size of the rugby ball we have in that. You guys see our sick studio here, obviously. Like, our background is deadly. We've got the new Fiji flag, actually. Compliments to Tui, again. Uh, because it's a World Cup. And Fiji just uh, destroyed destroyed Australia, who I actually cheer for a third. So I always cheer for Fiji first, then yeah. South Africa, and then Australia. It should, so, it should be it should be Australia, South Africa, Canada, Fiji. Like, oh, you're going to reverse? I would, but Canada's not good enough to make the World Cup, so Doesn't can't matter. cheer for them. Doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Still cheer for them in your heart. It's true. That's it's true. Order. You know, I almost played for Team Canada, right? Exactly. I so mean, I'm almost like... Rep them. I'm one of those guys. Like, you know, I just got injured, you know, and, and also didn't make the team, you know, like... In the world... I would have been... You know, they asked me to come play. I in just, the Rugby I Sevens, when it was Canada versus Fiji, ooh, that was a good game. They did lose. It was a good, that one game. It was a good game. Bro. I know. Yeah. And Vancouver Sevens. Yeah, I loved it. So... I don't even like rugby guys that much. I'm not a big rugby fan. Take me to... Okay, you don't rug like rugby or you don't like rugby guys? Okay, what? Okay, okay. All right, here's oh, a question. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you don't like... What do you think you like more? Do you like rugby or rugby guys? I don't know what that... No, I definitely don't like rugby guys. Okay. No offense to the rugby Fiji guys? crowd. I don't actually know what like a Fijian like rugby guy would be, but the rugby guys that are Canadian just trashy oh no offense well, to rude. those i'm offended are you what kind of that's how you met me honey i did not meet you that way i met you at church <laughs> so it's a little different and i never saw you going to strip clubs i never oh, yeah. saw you chugging a pitcher of beer every single game I, being in the shower and just being yeah. perverts yeah that's so. true actually rugby culture in canada is way different than rugby culture gross in like the rugby culture in Canada is very surrounding the drinking scene. Like after you finish playing, you go drinking. Oh yeah, and if you don't, and like you do that in Fiji too, but it's not like that's what rugby is about. Yeah, let's 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 emphasize this point with like the rookie run, okay? Oh yeah. What's a rookie run, John? So, <laughs> <laughs> did you do the rookie run? No, no. I don't know. People just didn't mess they're like they just didn't mess yeah, cause with me because you have an axe murderer face okay. when you don't want to do something and so for the team that i played for the club that i played for if we went down to vancouver to play we had to go over this mountain pass and a lot of the times rugby happened just before the cold season and so it would always be snowing on the mountain pass because it's super high and the and the the rookie race was you have to take a cookie <laughs> and the rookies on the team get naked on the top of the pass yeah and and i'm gonna say this guys this is not like a deserted area there is cars yeah hundreds of like, cars going by it's a busy highway and so everybody gets out of the bus and you have like the vets on each side and then the rookies line up and they have to go fully naked so all the junk's out and then they put a, a cookie in their butt and they have to <laughs> hold the cookie in their butt and run across the parking lot which is probably like 200 meters maybe and so 
It's basically like, you know, humiliation. It's like a frat kind yeah. of thing or whatever. So when you say, do I like rugby or do I like rugby guys? From my experience, rugby is better. <laughs> yeah, I think rugby culture is different around the world. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, <laughs> third Gross. win. Before I get to the third win, in case, just Ugh. I feel like we don't really ever talk about it, but about who we are, like why we do the things we do. I think most, I think we just assume most of the people watching this or listening to this know who we are. So me and Stephanie used to live in Canada. We moved to Fiji. We named our company Waka, Waka Farms, because it's easy to say and because it means roots. So we're coming back to my roots, me being Jonathan, because I used, my father was, is Fijian. And you were born in Fiji. And I was Fiji. born here. Um, and so we're telling our story through social media as the Waka family. And so we create content so that our businesses that we can advertise through our content can create jobs because the mission of our company is to create employment opportunities. That's right. So these are exciting things that we're celebrating, like 190,000 on Facebook. That's a big deal for us because that's yeah. like a bunch more people that we can reach that will spend money at our businesses that create jobs for awesome people. In yeah, our and when we reach out and advertise to you guys, it's not because we're trying to go, oh, just give John and I money. It's because that money supports employment for other people yeah. and that helps us create more jobs and the more money we make the more fun we have creating different businesses and john and i don't care what we do for work yeah um it's the fact that we can open up a business and then employ awesome people within fiji and i think personally my hope is that we can keep talent and fijians that are amazing at what they do within the country have good work ethic are yeah. honest have good values yeah keep them here keep give them, them work. here give them work yeah exactly um yeah because one of the things i was just talking about some with somebody about this today about people going overseas and i get it it's got a big draw and there's nothing wrong and with he was it like, it's you know like you know he was talking about some of his family's like but i don't you know i'll never go and i'm like yeah like it's tough because you know where we come from like minimum wage in fiji four dollars an hour basically 390 something yeah. for for some of the industries we're involved in and but like to rent a flat a one bedroom flat or one bedroom studio apartment or one bedroom apartment is here is like 250 dollars fiji in a month that's right so but you go to canada minimum wage is 16 dollars. people are like oh my goodness that's four times as much like, take away the conversion rate i'm talking one is fiji and one is canadian 16 dollars. well that's Minimum wage in Fiji is four dollars. Yeah, I can go to Canada and make four times as much money, and it's like, yeah, but a one bedroom apartment in Canada is two thousand dollars or more, where yeah. we lived at least. Sorry, where we lived, and so it's like, so you make four times as much money, but it costs almost ten times as much for rent. Yeah, so it's like, oh, that's cool. Like you can make so much more money, but don't ignore the expenses part of it. Um. So, anyways, yeah, like I think every there's certain people that need to just go experience it and some people do really well and some people will go and be like a lot of people like i miss what i left yeah and so we are we're coming back to this not because we missed this or like we had to experience this it's because like we were, feel like we were given a dream something that we need to pursue and it's like up to us to like use these resources and like our natural resources like the land in our clan that was unused use it wisely so that brings me to the third thing that we're celebrating today and that was signing a contract with a very big company that um we could probably talk about it but we're not going to talk about it yet just um, because we just signed the contract we signed the contract today we don't have like full like a, we know what our posting <laughs> schedule is going to be yeah. we just like don't know what we're going to be promoting first yeah for them um and so this is a balance with for us is like, do we use our platform just to promote our own businesses? And I would love to do that, obviously. Yeah. But for those of you who don't know, we don't make any money off of Facebook and Instagram. It's impossible Zero. for us. We've tried to uh, put in uh, requests for them to like look at our thing again, like to reanalyze it because they've rejected it. Yeah, but because we're in Fiji, there's media rules about not being able to monetize. And so unless the Fijian government changes that, mm -hmm. um, we will not be able to monetize. And so for us, it makes sense to be able to bring on other companies that we can advertise for and then make some money off of that. Yeah. So we can continue putting money into the back end of actually being able to support 
you know, wages for people and, and even transport and travel and just different things that we're doing. Yeah, um, so like uh, my parents are the other half of our mm-hmm. company. Not the Waka Media, but the Waka overarching That's right. uh, corporation. And so between them and our business back in Canada, that's our only like supplement and yeah. income. So they supplement some of the expenses that we incur here, business expenses, and we survive off our Canadian income. But like our lowest paid employee in Fiji makes more than we ever make, you know, from our businesses yeah. at the moment. And that's fine. These are the building stages of, of a brand and a company. But I really feel like, you know, those three big wins today are like having our first con our first contract for the Waka Media. Yeah. Hundred ninety thousand on Facebook and signing with this big company. Yeah. I feel like it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, like I'm excited to sign with the big company. I'm a little nervous. We have a year contract with them. Mm-hmm. Um I'm a little nervous about doing the advertising, I guess. Like um It's a bit more rigid than we're used to yeah I and and this, yeah. i just want to make it natural and it is a natural fit for us that's why we've taken them on because we already um, use their services we already anyways. Use their yeah. services so a lot of the stuff that we'll ever promote is just something that we use it needs to be natural because we want our page to be organic we want it to be authentic in what we're doing and that is the best fit we've had to use them for four years straight yeah and the cool thing is like the people who contacted us from that company already follow us <clears throat> Like they're already like, they contacted us because they are fans of ours in the after hours of their work. Yeah. So. And we've got a couple of contacts in our area that work in that company, like managers Mm. and stuff that we've done some other small things with and they're great people. And I think like them being great people has also drawn me towards that company. You know, you're right. You know, I, I see that manager out in town and I'm always like, oh, how are you? Like I feel instantly. Shout out to Levi. Yeah, Levi's a great guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, nobody's gonna. No. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. And I think it's safe. I think we're just cautious because we haven't gone into this with a, a big. I love company. that guy though. Yeah. But yeah, we're pretty excited. So how about me and you? Okay, so <clears throat> last week, um, we were we, we, actually, we actually filmed a podcast. We recorded last week. a whole podcast. Whole well, I cut it short. Yeah. We had a we had a we bick we started bickering live. We had thirty five minutes in. Hmm. We were not bickering live. There was zero bickering. There was. But I also feel like we need to sort something out today. Like despite all the celebration, like it's not been like the best day. I no. feel like it's all your fault. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. Okay. So last, so I was like, we should just figure this out because here's the thing. Like, and I'm not complaining, all right, guys. But like Monday, we do. I do a live a stream. Tuesday is our free day. Wednesday is Bible study. Thursday is today where we podcast. And then Friday we do another live stream. Yeah. Um, and In the evenings, that's what you're talking about. In after, the evenings. After, after work. After work, yeah. Um, so like, it is what it is. And like, hey, I get it. We're in control of our schedule. We don't have to do any of that stuff, right? Um, so I was like, you know what? Because we get less time, because we, a lot of our time that we are awake is like focused on the kids and being good parents like why don't we just use this time to like figure it out you know it's been a tough day oh let's talk gosh. about it okay well let's talk about what we were fighting on the podcast last week what okay. happened we we're not posting that one up no because we're not. it ended so awkwardly so what you have to understand is like when we fight i'm a vocal fighter i will tell you off very quickly yeah. i will give it to you straight Hmm. john is a passive aggressive fighter and will make it uncomfortable as humanly possible (laughs) and just be like silent like daggers and death and you're like you're not really sure what happened to you Hmm. but at the same time you kind of know something happened that's always my feeling so what happened last week you said i can't even remember to be honest i remember you said something to me that i was like irked at it was a miscommunication Mm. of some sort and you were like reiterating something to me and i was like okay yeah buddy and then i was like thinking about how we've had some comments in the past online where you've been kind of rude to me in public online right right and then i was thinking in my head like 
Oh, he's been rude to me. He's being rude to me, and I should just make a joke out of it. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I should just be like, bro, like you, you got it wrong. But like, I thought it was kind of like in a sarcastic, funny way. I wasn't actually trying to be a dick. And then John took it as like, wow, you're such oh, pumpkins a- and papayas. <laughs> That's what it was. I said we were talking about farming, and I had wow. said something about papayas. Do and you, do. you were supposed to say pumpkin. You were like, oh yeah, we're growing papayas and i was like no honey pumpkin and then you were like how dare you correct me oh my gosh oh my you gosh okay. you corrected me and then i was trying to you make a joke sound. about it <laughs> and then the worst part guys was we went into this game because like the conversation was dwindling john and i could both feel it like dying and we had like half an hour left and so i was like let john's like we'll go to questions he skipped into it quickly and i went already and i was like okay i didn't know we were fighting at this point and so i'm like okay john these are the questions like, mm-hmm. he's like yeah. mm-hmm. i don't have anything to say no nope. okay so that was your last week so <laughs> i'm making you sound like such a diva mm-hmm. no and then i tried to carry the conversation because i got awkward i panicked i was like uh like, john oh God, sucks at podcasting i don't know what happened <laughs> he went mute and bailed <laughs> So it's it was like actually it was super duper uber frustrating because I was like we lost our hard drive with like three podcasts on it and so we <laughs> haven't posted a podcast in forever because we're in Canada blah 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 we come back we're like okay hey, let's hit the podcast back <clears throat> first episode back have a fight and we're like we can't post that but I think we've gone past that now but today was like it's yeah. also a bit well of today a, you were all to me so let's hash this out you know in we don't my have much opinion time, so let's talk you about were. It cranky huh like i was like i was really hyped about we have like that contract about like this the new media company mm. and you were showing me the video and i was so excited about oh, yeah. it and you were trying to ask to about a question about um emailing the company back and they had sent an, an example video mm-hmm. and so <clears throat> you were showing it to him and i'm sitting right there and i was oh let's watch it let's just like start hashing through it let's get going with this And then I start talking about like, I'm thinking like so much more forward than you guys are. You guys are just like in the moment and you, and I'm thinking like, okay, so like we need to like actually plan out how to get bigger because you guys are already overwhelmed. You already have way too much to do. Your, your plates are already so full. So we need to think about hiring somebody. So through this first contract, we need to So like, I don't know if two things like. We went through the first contract. Yeah. Rude. Interrupting me. For, through the first contract <laughs> that we needed to be like this is how we're gonna pass it off now your turn okay so i don't know if tui i feel like me and me and tui are more of the same personality and i could 100 i could actually be way off because actually we haven't really talked about this but and this is maybe why me and steph operate really well together is because like i'm a very let's analyze let's strategize and take one step after we take that step we can take the next step so we get this contract and i'm like okay we got to travel like we got to go across you know to different island to do part of this contract so let's like just start talking about what we're going to need okay let's talk let's start talking about what is our availability of schedule and then we can make sure that we can you know send the first email the right first email and steph's like going to like You guys need to like figure out like all the shots, you know, like the shots that you need for these jobs so that like when we hire the next people, we can like systematize this thing. And usually I'm the systems guy, but I was, to me, I'm like, whoa, like, let's just like, first things first, let's just like, if we're available Monday, ooh, big task challenge. I'm like, we don't even know what to do. We guys got to do, get one under our belt so that we can like see how it went because like yeah you can imagine dude we've done two major commercials in fiji we've done a big documentary we already have three under our belt and we do media every single day we got this we actually need to be able to say how do we make it so somebody else could do this so did you lean like so two is not on the mic right now but like do you lean towards like you're comfortable with the way she she does or you're like you're more lean towards me so much more with john yeah and you're welcome you guys are so welcome for being me because you guys would (laughs) spoken like a true narcissist (laughs) you want to build a wall between the usa and mexico too 
<laughs> if you guys were just together, you would just still be checking your calendar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got okay, keep it moving. I got dissed hard today, so that's why I'm a little vindictive. John mm. was like, "You're talking too much," and I can't even like figure out what I'm doing. I'm just so confused because you're just like you won't shut up. And so I was like, "All right, all right." But here's the thing, guys: if you get me on like a passion project that I'm excited about. I'll just do most of the hard work for you. So if you just keep that going and go, yeah, that's great. That's great. Could you take care of that? Could you actually lay out mm. our shots for us? Could you give us a script? Could you do all this? And I'll be like, yes, I can. And then I will roll that lock, out. You guys would have a script. You would have all this stuff already. And then I would go here, perfect it. And you guys could do your little like nuance perfectionist thing that I don't do. And then we'd I don't be, like those hand gestures. We'd be ready and to like go. <laughs> You need it. <laughs> you do. That's annoying. Is it? Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about the anal retentiveness that that's goes annoying. into the projects. But I can give you a big project picture. Yeah, it's too big sometimes, though. Oh, well, don't think small, honey. Think big or you're going to get Okay. Nowhere. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so that kind of like summarizes. Yeah. But uh, it's. And then, and then tonight, Okay. let's just say this. John right. was complaining about dinner. I actually forced Tui to come make dinner with me. We predominantly eat rice in our house, okay? Everything is based around John's food preferences because John complains about eating anything but rice. So I have switched all of my cooking skills. That's the one food that is guaranteed to be served in heaven. It's rice. <laughs> right. In John's menu. So when we first got married, I... Do you ever see the word potato in the Bible? No, you don't. I don't know. I don't. But do we see the word rice? We're not talking about that. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Anyway, my mother is a great cook. I grew up with her cooking, but she does not cook well with rice. We are like, we can do like sweet and sour meatballs and rice and then like rice with soy sauce. So I am not okay. from a rice <laughs> Rice with soy sauce is for like welfare. Like... No, that's, that's just for just like really people. like homestead people that yeah. don't know how to cook. I mean, we rice. used to have rice and soy sauce like in the be when we first got married. Yeah, I served like, it to you probably once and then you were like, what <laughs> is this junk? It's still out, okay. And so I just, we honestly used to buy like a bag of like 10 kg rice. And then I, I would just like be like, okay, what kind of sauce can I make? and create for john to eat with rice and i switched all of my cooking skills towards like any kind of asian food because that made more sense to me i was like okay let's eat vietnamese okay but let's, let's put it like this if you had to choose rice or potatoes what would you choose for the rest of your life rest of your life now yeah now that like 12 years in i've developed a rice cooking skill so i can't really go back say no more but anyway we were at someone's house the other day they made potatoes Tui was like why don't we ever eat potatoes at the house? And I was all John's fault. John know, doesn't potatoes like were potatoes. Delicious. Yeah. So I told Tui, if we're going to make potatoes, you got to help cook because this is a big undertaking for me. So I had ribs, beef ribs from um, a birthday party. When we butchered a cow, we saved some of the meat. So I had some mm. in the deep freeze. So we pulled that out tonight. And then I told Tui, okay, you have to come assist and you can learn how to make Dude, this. Too many dishes though. <laughs> so so much well Simply i was dishes. like we're gonna make uh like there's 45 rib minutes of cleanup for me <laughs> an hour it was like 10 minutes oh, anyway like so we time. made this elaborate meal with gravy and everything like roasted vegetables short ribs with like a southwestern like orange tang sauce it's delicious southwestern um, so you're talking like indonesia thailand kind of thing no. Southwest Asian? Oh, this is kind of what I had in my head. Oh. Anyway, I made it up. Mm. Tasted good. We put it in the oven. And then John was eating one of the pieces of like short rib. And all he it tastes too much like cow. I'm like, it's beef. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, I'm a farmer now, you know. I spend... <laughs> I spend a lot of my day around oxen and, and livestock. <laughs> yeah? And, and wrangling. Do riding you? horses you know 
cattle farming and so he's being sarcastic you guys everybody <laughs> he does not once in a while he thinks he looks sexy <coughs> on his tractor that's about it <laughs> ah, be funny and so i just feel like the cow tasted like cow, cow? i don't know so, so whatever you know i felt like it tasted like the smell of cow i don't like that, that. one piece yeah, yeah well so here's the risky part guys so when they go out and butcher a cow mm. They literally just shoot it in the bush and butcher it where it is. And so when I'm preparing dinner from this like frozen bag of meat, I'm also cutting off grass yeah. on the outside of the cow. So thought, yeah, it literally right. could be cow pie right. that the the cow landed in. And when you guys cut up the cow, that could have happened. So I normally when I take like the frozen piece of meat, I like skin it like I, I shave off like the pieces that I am uncomfortable with eating myself and I give it to the dog <laughs> and then I go through and like butcher it. I suck at butchering meat. I don't like the feel of raw meat. My hands makes me gag the whole time. This one won't help me. It's another issue in our marriage. But, you know, we all eat so <laughs> It's just gonna be us like no it's gonna be me ranting on you all night okay um <laughs> how about them flying fijians world cup so how do you feel about our cheering during the world cup oh okay i don't feel like there's a different topic here okay so the other day actually all this week i've been waking up to just absolute <sighs> mayhem at like three in the morning two in the morning just screaming and jumping in the <laughs> living room. And I may have said great. some profane words to you guys so the other profane. morning. It was I, very harsh. I am fine with it. You guys can scream. I like, just have to give you You can AirPods. scream like banshees if people are winning. We we were winning. No. If you've won the game. Okay. You, there's a difference between winning and won. Okay. What are you saying? If you've won the game. Okay. You are allowed to scream like that. Okay. In the midst of your joy, go back and watch the real guys of when Fiji won <laughs> the game. You need to suffocate that down. Me and Tui were like, <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking, just like this is weird. This is how full on leprechauns maybe I'm jumping not. in the living room, screaming with joy. Just the two of them. It's not like a crowd of them amping each other up. It's just the two of them, like boing boing, ah! and like me and the kids are sleeping, and I'm just like somebody may die this is how analytical <laughs> i am though i'm like sitting there and then they score and as i like jump up and i'm like like jumping up and down i'm thinking about like you look like a fool while you're jumping up and down you look like a little girl because you're so excited but you can't help it so just enjoy this feeling that you're feeling that's what i feel that's what i think about when i'm jumping up and down i have witnessed it you should be ashamed I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm I'm kidding. It's fine. It's great that you support your team. Mm. I Once every four years. Love so you got to go hard. So we discussed actually me and Tui discussed on behalf of the group. So there's two other guys that work okay. for uh, the company. Um, yeah, there's actually yeah, there's only two other guys that work for us. In really in Waka. Yeah, like well, in everything. Like every no. all the other people are women. No, that's not true. We have Jew at the coffee shop. That's true. So don't be rude to him. Sorry, did you? Um, <laughs> Just forgetting about the one but, dude at okay, the coffee We shop? decided, like what me and Tui said, is like the guys need to learn how to save at the end of the day. Save? Like yeah, save, save money. Save money? So yes. we're like, hey, World yes. Cup's on right now. And we're like, wouldn't it be sick to be there in person? Like how excited we were to be there in person? Yeah. What we should do is we should, all four of us should put away money individually. And our goal is to save for the next World Cup. And then we all go together. Where, and the next where is the world cup hosted just guess okay it's very convenient just guess. no australia yes oh, okay that's all right good. so this could be pulled off so i just i <gasps> you could maybe stay with mike's parents they would love that mike's parents mike, mike your and ex's ben. brother oh do i know anybody from australia other from then oh, so i was Fiji? like i'm like your, your ex's brother's <coughs> parents live in, yeah that'd be ex's parents live in australia no nope. we're not sure. talking about you. why are we talking about sure your ex don't. why do you start talking about your ex? <laughs> we could that'd be free accommodation i'm just spitballing but they're fun they're also really cool yeah no we, i think we just stay in a hotel 
So we decided I don't know. if we I feel like Mike's gram, dad PGM, will make it a party and a half. He's we awesome. don't need to party. We want to watch rugby. I know. But. If we save seven grand each, we can go. Fijian? Fijian. That's not too bad. So that's 150 a month. What did you think of that? Is that crazy? That's too much, huh? Can can be done? It's On not, our wages? It's yeah. not too much. You could do that. Yeah, like I was like, it wouldn't... It's <clears throat> Actually, not they e- could probably do that over us. <laughs> No, but it's not an easy amount, but I think it can be done. And so, like, I was budgeting, like, um, probably two grand return ticket. Because right now, if you look at return tickets to Sydney, it's only 900 and something, like a 1,000 Fijian. Okay. But it's going to be more expensive when the World Cup's on. Way more. So, like, say two two grand. Probably, because it's in Australia. So, there's probably going to be, Australia's a huge country. And so, there's probably going to be different stadiums that, like they always do that they host oh, the okay. games in so you're gonna have to take a domestic flight and like at the world cup they don't play throughout the week they only play on the friday saturday sunday the games oh so you're not just so going... you're a week in between your games if oh, we want to watch two fiji games we're there for a week so how many games are you going for just one there are just two sorry oh okay yeah. okay so we just pick like probably the two pool games we wanted to go see okay and so we'd be there from like, but like Friday but you wouldn't to Friday. want to try to go to like the final, no matter who's there? I don't know. What would you think? I think it's better to see <clears throat> our home team. And then just watch the final from like, a, I mean, Fiji's going to make it to the final. It's just like, I I just want to be there for the vibe. That's all. I don't, it doesn't matter what game. I just want to be there. And so we're like two grand to get there. One grand for domestic flights. We're at three grand. Um, another... Two, another two grand for tickets. Yeah. Probably. No, sorry. Another thousand dollars for tickets. So that brings us to four. Another two grand for accommodation. Okay. Because we're there for a week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or sorry, another 1500 for accommodation and then 1500 for food, drinks, whatever for the well, whole week. And it's better so to seven. over budget than under budget. Like this is way over budgeting. I'm like pretty much taking what it is now and almost doubling everything. And you know what's great about trips? If you have like so much time per- to prepare and then you over budget and then you come home and you have leftover well, money, you're like, yeah. what's up? Mm-hmm. I got to do what I wanted and then I could well, still... We want to go and you got to buy some stuff and stuff that you like you want to go and like walk past the store and be like, ooh, those are some nice shoes. Oh, and buy yeah. buy the shoes. Yeah, the shopping. Do you yeah. know what? Also, I think you need to budget for me to come and just like, you no, know, shoot. a few days here, a few days I was days thinking there. more of a guy's trip. I, yeah, it can be a guy's trip. I just want to come on the <laughs> flight like, no, and then I don't want to see you for the week. Oh, okay. I'll just go do. Okay. And then, yeah, that's Fair it. Enough. I'll just go shopping. There's a few like restaurants that have like really flamboyant food that's really colorful that you would hate to eat. In Sydney? Yeah. Okay. And I'd love to eat there. I've heard Sydney has terrible food. I feel I'm like kidding, all I'm the kidding, Australians kidding, really hate you right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, probably not true. So I think we're going to the next <clears throat> to the next World Cup. I think we're great. That's it. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Can't wait to go. Um. No, actually, I thought we should say, Pella, our friend, is coming this week. Oh yeah. Um, a Fijian yeah, right. friend of ours from Saskatchewan, where from John Canada. from Canada. So obviously, he's nobody not knows where Saskatchewan is. They think it's like a rich- city in Afghanistan. He's not originally from Canada, but yeah. he's Fijian, living in Canada, in Saskatchewan, where John's family lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is coming back here, and he's going to take a detour and come stop in and see us, mm-hmm. which is pretty exciting. I love having people just like come from home, come from wherever, and come visit us. It's gonna be, it's, he's fun, too. It's yeah. going to be 24 hours, so it's going to be short, but it's going to be fun. We're going to make we're gonna go take on the him. rope swing. Oh, and he will. <laughs> go on the tractor <laughs> and he's also from sangani which is where you get crippled you know where oh, we got all yeah, the grog from that's right it's, so it's he's gonna come here for a night then we're gonna take so him. is he he's our uncle that he's lives with us there. oh he's not from there no he's vasu from there yeah oh okay. his mom is from there but is he somehow he's obviously related to our uncle that lives in the house with us yeah because his his mom bella's mom and our uncle are related like oh second cousins or something like that okay yep. so you're related to him through marriage somehow what's that you're some you're like to pella yeah i guess so you like, are yeah. through yeah. marriage you're related yeah you're not blood but my father's sister's husband 
is his mother's second cousin. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's a close connection, yeah. Fiji. Exactly. <laughs> Basically blood relatives. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's always what I say to everybody. Like when I'm going into like the towns that are near us, I'm always like, if you're like Itoke Fijian, like you're probably my auntie somehow. Mm. Like somehow. Like I bet we could find a Speaking connection there. Speaking of... It's okay. We've had a couple of situations, actually, and well, that I know personally of in Vanuatu, that we've had like some it's okay affairs type situations going on. What does that mean? No, just like people that are stepping out of place. That and it's just, it's been really maybe this is more of a conversation for the live that we're gonna do tomorrow. No, it's a conversation for today. Okay, no, just like um, people. So there's a, the culture in Fiji is is based on patriarchy. So your your lineage, the importance of your lineage is based on your father's bloodline. Yeah. And so you belong to the place where your father's from. Um, so like I'm actually really lucky that my dad is Fijian and not my mom. Yeah. Because if my mom was Fijian, I probably wouldn't even I would well I wouldn't be registered to any clan in Fiji. No. And I wouldn't be able to even get my citizenship probably it's much harder because we have a friend currently yeah. that has her mother as fijian and she hasn't been able to get her citizenship because mm -hmm. of that yeah and so we had i was part of a situation uh recently where in a in a clan where somebody spoke up who wasn't part of the clan and made a big headache of a potential investment opportunity from a very big company on that clan's land. And I was like, you know, I'm, I guess I'm a skeptic naturally at heart. Like I question things. I probably default to question things rather than just accept them. Just being analytical, whether that's religion or new ideas, poke holes in things like before just being like, that's a great idea. Um, and so with this, I was like, you know, usually I'm pretty, like why do we do this way do we have to do it that way and then at the meeting this last week i was like oh there's a reason that we do the things this way in itoke culture is because like when people speak out of turn who don't belong in the clan it really can screw things up well and it makes sense to me like from an outside perspective like when you do patriarchal society and like you belong to your father's clan it's better that you at least belong only to one clan instead of both. Right. Yeah. 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 So like when I look at it, like it, when I used to look at, I used to go like, Oh, it's weird that like you can't pick where you belong. Like if you were raised up in your mother's clan, which a lot of people are, which a lot of people are yeah. like, that's hard for them. I, I feel bad mm. because they've, this is their home. But then when you look at how people are making decisions, it's everybody that has their father's bloodline here gets to make decisions here. Yeah. And it makes sense in the in the fact that like they could go to where their father's from and make decisions there. Because like in church, we we have two ways of deciding things. We have congregational votes where the entire body of the church that attends the church gets to vote. Okay. That's a very complicated, in my opinion, way of voting. Because you have so many people involved in that vote, okay? But it's usually an anonymous and majority decision. Yeah, that's true. So. But then you have another way of voting, which is having elders, and they make decisions for the church. In Fiji, you have... I'm comparing this because it makes sense to me. Okay. In, in Fiji, in the clans, you have a congregational vote. You have every clan member voting. Mm. It's not... A board it's not a select few that represent the masses hmm. and so you cannot have everybody that claims to be from there to make a decision from there you have to have a select few that can make a decision which means that they're from their father's side yeah and people that are from their father's side somewhere else can make decisions there because if you have everybody making decisions mother and father's side you have people making decisions here and there so they have to have a authority somewhere yeah not everywhere and there's something in there's a saying i actually don't know honestly how it goes how it's said but like it's like you have you always have more love where you're in your mother's village hey tui 
tell me like like where your like your mother's village is like where they love you the most or like where that kind of like warm feeling comes from like but like you don't you don't necessarily get that like where you are from but that's why a lot of people take their kids to be raised where they we say in Fijian it's called Basu like where their mom is from is because that's where like people really love them hmm. like really um but i i could see that mm. like let's say like within decision making if you can come into a place and you have authority and you can question and you can demand you can be less loved mm. and if you're somewhere where you have no authority and you're just there for a good time what's not to love right like you can't stir the pot you cannot make such yeah, a big true. mess because you have nothing to say there right you're just there to enjoy and like partake and people can dote on you or tease you or whatever and then we go back home it's like the hard-hitting stuff and yeah. you can get into controversy because you have a voice you have a say that's true right how do you feel when you're back in canada you're talking to people who actually listen to the podcast like our podcast yeah. like some of our friends yeah um i felt Good about it with some conversations. Remember we were talking about with uh, Kyle and Rachel? Kyle and Rachel. Oh. At uh, your mom and dad's. Yeah. At the oh, camp. Yeah, I do. Um, I was like, whoa. I'm like, okay, okay, well, I don't think they were listening before. Like, this is very specific, like a name. But like, I was like, whoa, it's weird when they're like, we're going to start listening to you. And then they went back to where they were staying and then they we met them the next day or something they're like so we listened to your podcast and i was <laughs> like well that's like really weird like yeah. i was like well that's like not weird like i don't want you to but i'm like okay i guess sometimes we just like toss this stuff up into the universe and like maybe it'll stick al dente my best part and we talked about this on our podcast that we did not release is that the best part for me about talking to people about our podcast that we've released is my mother no oh. um she said to me probably the one of the first conversations we had when i was back um with her she was saying to me oh yeah someone was talking to me about your podcast and how inappropriate it is oh. um and she said you know what but i and i said well mom did you did you listen to that podcast? And she was like, no, but I heard it was like about like a sexual topic. And I was like, yeah, but did you listen to the podcast? And mom's like, no, I didn't need to because I already know like what you said was legitimate. And I'm not worried about like your views on sex or how you wrap that into whatever you were saying. Mm. And so I love that because me and my mom have a great relationship. Um, and I feel like that's like the ultimate trust when someone comes up to you and they're like, did you know your daughter said something horribly inappropriate online? And you're like, yeah, it's all good, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, so good. Wow, thank you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's um, some confidence. Yeah, I was stoked about that. But on the other hand, my friend Leah, she was saying to me, she's like, oh, this is one of our really good friends in Canada. She's saying to me like, oh, I love listening to you guys. Because I just feel like I'm hanging out with you. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Like, I hope we can keep it real. Yeah. And I think we do. Obviously, I was a bit ragging on you tonight. Um, we, I think like, I think some days when you're like, we work together all the time. And like, when somebody's just like having a bad day or, or, or just like things are not flowing between mm. you. I think like sometimes like today I felt like you were just making a lot of negative comments to me. And so I was just trying to make a joke out of it or like just like let it try to roll off like so, the cuff and be like, ah, whatever, like let's move on. I think like it's okay what? to talk about it. It's okay to like just listen, listen Josh to this with it. Right I don't Full on sleep talking conversation going on in the background of our studio right now. Our kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Like they'll just, so guys, we record in our house after our kids go to bed. That's just what works for our schedule. Okay. Until such a time that we, I don't know. I don't really see how this could be any different <laughs> for us to be honest with you. Unless we have like awesome, like, like Team business. Of super nannies that can put our children to bed. Yeah. Without us. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> yeah, have the studio all set up. But um, our kids are just randomly talking to each other. In their sleep. In so sleep we're back in Canada and people are like, you know, like listening to our podcast. 
and we're me i just felt like when i went to canada and seen all of our you know, some of our friends again i was like actually before backtracking just getting there it was a really weird feeling for me personally being like i do not miss this at all in canada yeah Really? Like, oh, because we flew back into our, our hometown where our business is. Yeah. And it was just like, boom, go, go, go. And like, just seeing everybody like big fancy trucks and fancy cars and all the toys and trailers and quad bikes and dirt bikes and all this stuff. And like, but for whatever reason, I was like, like, I, I've already been a part of that facade. I've, you know, worked in the industries where people have lots of money. And I was like, I don't miss this at all. Mm. And then we went camping with our friends. We went and hung out with our parents. And you were like, and we chilled. Oh, I miss that. And then, <laughs> sorry. And then John it was like. this ADHD in this podcast. Yeah. Like, Wait, listen to the dog. Are, this is John's favorite moment. I absolutely love. I'll wake up in the middle of the night, walk outside to listen to my dog howl. I don't know why. Shh. And John so, sometimes will start howling with him yeah. to like get him going so he does more because he just like it's the joy of his life of owning a dog. <laughs> oh, Harley, such an idiot! He's going so hard right now. He goes right so now. hard. He goes so hard. Just so, yeah, I think after we experienced all the fun stuff, I was like, you know what? Like, I actually do miss this. <laughs> Dude, so I love this. I love that this is actually happening right now. So that you guys get to I hope it. this is being captured properly. Oh, it's being captured. There's no way that's not being captured. I'm going to have to go there and spank him. <laughs> spank him? <laughs> like you've never spanked him before? No, that's your job. Yeah, I have to go out and say, hey. And then yeah. like, Shh. Oh, maybe he heard me. He's and then obedient. at the end of our trip, I ended up being like, well, I think it's because I came home early and I left you guys there for like two weeks. And I came home and the house needed some work, right? And we're missing walls now. Oh, by the way, bathrooms. John renovated my bathroom, oh, yeah. which was a dark dungeon before. Of rusty death hole Oh, traps. it was a death hole. Like you yep. go in there and it would pee quickly and run out before like a cockroach ate you alive because you were trapped with your pants down. That's, now, no, now yeah. there's a light bulb above the toilet. Number one, best thing oh, we've welcome. ever done. Number two, it's like tiled with white and it feels clean and i love scrubbing those tiles and sanitizing things right. in there i so love it when you scrub those it tiles. fulfills my soul to have a clean bathroom so. so i came home and i did a bunch of work on the house and i was like when i left i was like oh i do miss that and but now i'm like i'm good now yeah i, I think what it was was like after spending time investing in friends and family i was like i miss that i miss the relationships um and i have I can count all those on my hand here, less than my hand. You know, those kind of relationships. And I think that's the one thing that I probably wish for the most was deeper. Yeah. Well, and I think like the first part of our trip, you had lost your voice. So you weren't able to like hang out that with some hard. of those people that we wanted to have conversations with or you wanted to have conversations with. Yeah. So I had a cough before I went to Canada. And then we got there. The day I got there, we got there on Saturday. We went to church on Sunday, and Sunday I lost my voice, and I lost my voice for three weeks of my four that I was there for, <laughs> and so it was yeah. just so frustrating because we went camping for three nights with like our some of our best friends, yeah. And I'm fly fishing with two of my friends, and they're like talking to me. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, man, it's just like you know when you <clears> just love it. You, like, that's what it was like. Yeah, you, you and were the streams like the flowing, and came. they're like. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were right by a, a river. Nobody yeah. can hear you. I just sat there in my lawn chair. I was just That's like, so sad. Okay. I feel bad for you. Yeah. But I think like I miss Canada a bit in the convenience area of life. Like in Walmart, I went into Walmart. How dare oh my you. gosh. I went into Walmart. I was like, I'm going to be in and out. I have 20 minutes. And then I was in there for two hours just going, oh, oh I could buy that. And then I had to really go, okay, do you really need that? In Costco. I took That's the, a problem. I went to Costco. I bought a lot. I really That's did. Good. Sorry about the credit card, honey. Yeah, I haven't looked at it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll pay it off. A few more jobs. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to play our game that we always play. So It's a conversational game. It's a conversational game. 
called We're Not Really Strangers. And this is the lover's edition. So I think that... Couple's edition. Maybe we'll do one card. Okay. Hit me. We'll see. I'm going to start with the harder one. <clears throat> it says, how do you find... Uh, no, sorry. How do you define cheating? Um, I think it would be like... Hmm. Giving yourself emotionally to somebody else. Hmm. And like... I'm just thinking about like how I feel. Or how I would feel. I think it would just be... Investing or being... Or surrendering so to somebody else emotionally in a way that you weren't willing to invest or surrender to me emotionally. Hmm. Is that way too? No, I would. Ag- I would agree with that. Hmm. I would say also like on. Um, I would say yes to that, and then I would also say like spending too much time with somebody chatting online, where. You're growing a connection and you talk about things that you couldn't talk about with your spouse. Right. Not that that is necessarily like cheating and what some people would think of is cheating. But I think that is like a gateway to like losing your connection with the one that you love Mm. and building a bond with somebody else. And I think that like... I don't even look at cheating. I look at cheating obviously as like having intimate relationship with somebody else. Well, yeah. Like, but like yeah. intimate relationship on any level. Yeah. In the sense Emotionally, of like where you are more physically. invested in somebody else than me. Yeah. So I think we agree on that. And mm-hmm. I think like something that we talk about constantly and I was taught growing up is like make sure that you live above reproach as much as possible. Can't always do it. Mm-hmm. But I think as much as possible, do that. Like it was funny last night. I went to Bible study because we can't go to Bible study together all the time <clears> because of the kids. Mm-hmm. And our Bible study is far away from here; it's like an hour. Yeah. And so, um, on the way back, there's a single girl who needed a ride to the highway. Oh, okay. And I like got in my truck, and they're all standing outside, so they're trying to figure out who's gonna give a ride to the highway. It's like 20 minutes away. And I like rolled down my window. I was like, "Hey, sorry, but not sorry." I'm like. I give you a ride, but I'm a married man and that wouldn't be above reproach. So I'll see you later. <laughs> and I was just like, and they're like, totally get it. Cause I was like, I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm really not sorry. And they're like, totally understand. Cause I like got in my car. I'm like, I'm the one. Cause I'm already going to the highway. You're the one that should be yeah, giving should her be a, giving ride? a ride. That's right. I'm, like, I'm sorry, but you guys know, and you guys all understand why I can't give her a ride. Which is so. Which is actually nice to have a crew of people that are not like, why wouldn't you give her a ride? It's How so rude true, is actually. that? And, and and actually, I can roll down my window and just be you like, you can say about that, it. Yeah. and those people are like, yeah, dude, good call. Which is nice to have because uh, I could care less if you gave her a ride one time. Me and you'll be good. It's but it but it is like something that like it's still an opportunity for somebody to question it's an opportunity for someone whatever, to question yeah. it's an opportunity for me to go what are you doing yeah right it's an whatever. opportunity to open the door of what the hell right what are you doing that's mm-hmm. weird and so above reproach is trying to limit those questions and it's nice to be around a group of people that are like yeah do that yeah that's good yeah and you're like well that's not an that's not like the average true. reaction true. and i like that true so good for i like those people yeah me too. <laughs> anyway this podcast has been sponsored by fresh tea and coffee check us out in st ganga we're between lumbasa and Savo Savo. you can stop in for pizza we have it by the slice latte ready to go made fresh every day yeah lemon lattes tea. mochas ice mochas ice lattes lemon iced tea and freshly you squeezed should be greeted with a smile we have fantastic staff mm-hmm. we couldn't appreciate them more and we, we do this enjoy. kind of stuff so that we can point you guys towards those businesses yeah and we employ some really really cool people and we hope to employ more people Mm -hmm. in the future so have a good night everybody and thank you for joining peace